Okay, continuing with our uh, oil furnace service, we're going to talk about CAD cells and CAD cell relays. Now, earlier we talked about stack switches, and stack switches are pretty much gone now. Uh, they've been replaced by this little thing. Right in the center there. It comes off like that, and it is a light sensitive device. It's cadmium disulfide, and what happens when it sees light, it reduces its resistance fairly massively from uh, around 20,000 ohms. Now, ohms is a measurement of resistance to, uh, well, you can get it almost to zero, and we'll demonstrate this here in a little bit. But the way this is used is it's placed in here, transformer, this is a transformer, this points at the fire, points down the tube, uh, the burner tube, uh, into the fire. And because uh, uh, oil has a very bright yellow flame, uh, this is sensitive to the flame. And so it proves that the flame has actually come on. Because the worst thing in the world we want to do is run one of these oil furnaces without ignition so that it just simply fills up the furnace full of oil. It'll be a real interesting fire after that. So, that's our sensor. And now we've got two types of controls. Now both these controls do actually the same thing. This is kind of the old standby, the Honeywell CAD cell relay. Very simple. This red button on the top is pressed. When you have a uh, flame failure, and it will try again. It usually tries about 45 seconds. Uh, if it doesn't see the flame after the burner starts in 45 seconds, this shuts down and it has to be reset with a button. Now, it won't reset right away. It uh, takes about three or four minutes before it will reset and try again. But it can be reset as many times as you want, which has been kind of a problem uh, because people do this and think they're getting their oil furnace running so they'll keep pushing this silly thing and they can get quite a bit of oil in that combustion chamber and then it can be a real problem uh, wiring for this thing F and F are for the uh, uh, CAD cell relay or for the, excuse me, the CAD cell these yellow wires uh, would hook up to F and F TNT is for the thermostat. So you'll just simply hook this thing up to the thermostat, has its own power source inside here, and when the thermostat closes, then this thing will energize and do a trial for ignition. Now it's usually set on a 4x4 uh, J box, black and white coming in for your hot and your uh, neutral lead. In this case, all it's got is an orange. This orange goes to the uh, motor, the pump motor and fan motor, and the, the uh, transformer. So the spark transformer starts sparking, the pump starts, uh, or the pump motor starts pumping, and off it goes. One trial for ignition has to reset has all its own power source inside so the only connections are T and T and then of course your two wires to your uh, CAD cell. This one's a little newer so again this is Honeywell a little more complicated this thing's got quite a bit of wiring on it you can separate the uh, uh, ignition transformer from the motor and you can run the ignition transformer just until the flame proves and shut it off with that other control it had to run all the time um, you can run that just until the flame proves if you want to do it that way uh, you can also put a limit switch in this thing which will shut it off under high uh, temperature and there is a uh, solenoid valve for the oil that will delay the uh, oil turn on. Uh, other than that, it's fairly simple. 
red button right here red light right there that light tells you it's out on safety you can push the reset and it will start after one time it will not start again once this thing has gone out on safety once then if you push the button it will go one more time and then it locks out completely and will not restart uh, kind of a little trick they put in there if you look inside it this also fits on a 4 before j box to reset from restricted mode press and hold reset button until light flashes or for 45 seconds so you can fool this uh, and get it trying to go again but the idea is we're trying to keep people from and possibly causing a hazardous uh, condition where you could end up with a fire uh, it does have a, a diagnostic light this light will uh, go on if there's flame off if there's no flame flashing if it is in uh, lockout okay uh, lots more connections on this one does the same thing has a power source inside it has two wires that go to the uh, uh, flame sensor or the CAD cell and two wires that go to the thermostat but other than that uh, pretty much the same control has a little bit more uh, in the way of safety now we're gonna take and test one of these CAD cells now I've got a CAD cell right here and uh, it's hooked up to a uh, ohmmeter now if I block this off with my thumb you can see we're going up uh, about 10,000 ohms you look at that thing is 8.9 or so K ohms for kilo ohms uh, so as long as I uh, fingers over this thing it stays pretty high if I take my finger off and we have lights all about here now we're down to about 124 ohms it's a considerable difference from where we were now if I take and put a high intensity light on it we drop down to about 24 ohms so there's a tremendous difference in when this thing sees light and when it does not see light uh, if it's absolutely dark this thing's usually about 20,000 and I can there I go if I cover enough things up light will actually come through my finger uh, when I'm covering it and it looks like we're about 40,000 at that point so it's per essentially off so this has to see light one other thing about this control that uses this light if it sees light prior to the uh, burner coming on let's say I had shined a light in this and had this open so it was just shining into a flashlight the unit will not start it knows that it should not see light before the burner lights it should only see light after the burner lights so if you had a condition where you had opened this top and this hinge just usually is, goes down like that and covers the top of the burner and then you can flip it open if there's enough light it's not going to burn so if you just flip it closed it will light at that time uh, it's just a safety issue with them to keep the uh, burner from lighting from a permanently shorted uh, CAD cell if this CAD cell was shorted then if you did not have that feature then it would uh, light even without seeing light these things should run uh, around 300 ohms they will work at 750 to a thousand but it's kind of iffy I think I'd be replacing at that point but generally I see these things run when they're working properly and clean at about uh, 275 to 350 ohms in that area they should be fine so that's the uh, the CAD cell relay and the CAD cell generally tested each time it's serviced 
uh, you would maybe blank this thing off. Don't recommend sticking your fingers in there while this is starting because it's 20,000 volts coming off here for your uh, ignition spark. But this can be blocked off and you can light your burner and this should safety out uh, in whatever time period it has. So, CAD cell has to see light once the burner lights but can't see light until the burner lights. These are one time uh, have to be reset each time. This one can be reset as many times as you wish. This one will only reset once unless you fool the control by holding it down for 45 seconds. Not recommended to do this any number of times simply because if it's not lighting or it's not staying lit it's time to find out why. So ohmmeter about the only tool you need here. Everything else can be done by firing off the burner, blocking this, and testing the safety to make sure it works. And that is all for uh, CAD cells and CAD cell relays.